So I'm joined with our president, Mr. Roy Baker. Roy, nice to see you. Hi everybody, it's great to be at the Wacker World Championships 2021. What a journey the last two years have been. Absolutely, absolutely. How's it been as the president going through the pandemic? You know, when I became the president in 2019, who would have ever thought something like this would happen to the world, let alone sport? So it's been a difficult time, but during that difficult time, I kind of behaved the way I behaved as a fighter. That out of season, it's very important to prepare for the next season. So when we were out, we focused really on education, on integration, on communication, and on continental development. So we kind of stood back from the tournaments that were our lifeblood and what we did and how we did it. And we stepped back and talked about organisation design, our brand, our board composition, the way we govern ourselves, the way we, we, we function as a world body. And I think we have learned from that. One of the biggest things we have learned is really the, the power of the platforms like Microsoft Teams and Zoom, and we can really connect globally without having to travel. Absolutely. It's been a, a real journey for us all, hasn't it, in all different walks. How have you found the Olympic involvement with the delays and the, the backstory behind all that? How's that been? I, I honestly think maybe that was a positive for us because... It allows myself and my key team, like Espen Lund, uh, sit back and make sure that we had everything we needed to have. And maybe we would have been too busy to have done that if it hadn't been for COVID. So um, I always say to you guys, I'm just one person, I'm a member of a team, um, but it enabled myself and my team to look strategically at what we're doing and most importantly, why we're doing it. And it really allowed us to focus on the right things that will help the sport grow. Fantastic. So obviously we've got a very exciting journey ahead of us with the Olympics and with the Games. We've got the European Games coming up soon. I know there's been a couple of changes with the qualification process of that. Could you cl clarify that for us? Sure. So for, for the European Games, we have the European Championships next year in the disciplines and the weight classes. And it will be the top eight athletes in each of those weight classes. And then there will be replacement athletes which will be below them in a ranking system based against who beat you. So the European Games next year, I believe, will be the uh, busiest European Games in our history. Not just because of the, the European uh, Games, uh, the Olympic European Games, but also because next year's European Championships will also be the eliminators for the World Combat Games. The top four fighters in different weight classes, in different disciplines, will go to the World Combat Games. So I honestly believe next year at the European, WACO European Championships will be the biggest European Championships in our history by about 100%. Wow, that's impressive. That's a big difference. Big difference. We're looking forward to being there. So, big question. Whether we'll get an answer or not, I don't know, but I'll need to ask. When are we going to be in the Summer Games? That's the, that's the question on everybody's tongue. You know... I, I'm a president and you guys know me a lot many years I'm an optimist so that's my goal but it's a huge goal there are, there are Olympic sports that have been recognised for more than 20 years and have never been in the games um, however look how quickly we got into the European games so it is my goal it is my wish when I really don't know uh, for sure not, not in, in, in 2024 90% not in 2028 Maybe we can go for 2032, 2036, but it's, it's that type of time frame. Um, unfortunately, some people think that when you're Olympic recognised, you're in the Games. That is not the case. There's 28 key sports. On top of those key sports, there's a thing called five invitational sports, which the host country can invite. So our biggest opportunity, really, is that one of those host nations decide that kickboxing is the right sport to do it. And that's the kind of back door. But the problem with that is, as you see in karate, if you come in that way, you can as quickly go out the next year. So it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. So my vision is to get there. My real vision is to get us in the other continental games and, and most importantly, the Youth Olympic Games. I think I can do the Youth Olympic Games in a, in a, in a, a reasonable time frame, whilst I'm still president, which will not be too long. Thank you. Appreciate your honesty and, of course, your optimism. We have a very, very strong youth development in our sport, don't we? It's, it's an amazing system that brings, especially from the new children categories that are added recently, from seven years old all the way through. We see many go from, from a young age all the way through to senior. So how do you think we were able to do that as WACA? I, I think, in, and I've said it in a few of my publications, I think the diversity of WACO is the envy of all other combat sports. 
So we have seven disciplines and we can attract a young, timid kid at seven years of age like I was into doing point fighting on musical forms. And they are not intimidated and they are allowed to grow. And then they move and function into light contact. And then if they want hard contact, they can then move into ring sports and, and so forth and so on. So we are unique in the world of combat sports. You have karate that have two disciplines. You have Muay Thai has one discipline. You have boxing has one discipline. We have seven. That is a blessing, but it's also a curse because we are so diverse and so big. Look at the number of athletes here today, 1,637. The sport itself has that diverse portfolio of seven sports, which is it's a fantastic opportunity for us. And it, it, it's, why that, it's how we can have 1,000 events a year, 326,000 athletes in one single year registered in 2019. That's because of that diversity. But we also, that brings its own challenges, it, the logistics of the amount of athletes that we have. Um, I will always remember uh, the inspection of the IOC. They came and looked at the Irish Open one year, uh, the year before we got our provisional recognition. Uh, and a guy called Mike Joyce came, who was the, kind of the chief delegate, and he sat up above the, the stage of the Irish Open, which you know well, and he looked down and he went, how do you guys do this? He said, you have 70% of the athletes we have at the Olympic Games, but you do it over three days. He said, how do you do it? And I said, honestly, I said, it's because of the volunteers. And we have 24 areas, and we're used to this volume. But when you get somebody at the level of the IOC coming in and seeing that and just going, wow, this is like, wow. It's, for us, it's normal. But for them, when they see the numbers, it's, it's, uh, it's a shock to them. And that's got to put us in good stead, right, when we're talking to people and the volume of spectators and the volume of athletes that we bring. That's surely got to be good for the Olympics, right? It's good for everybody, but where we have to get better is we have to get better in our social media platforms, our video platforms, and our, 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 our social profile and our branding. So uh, WACA will be starting a new uh, media office in, in January. Uh, that media office will specifically look at our social medias, and there will be a number of staff in that who will be full-time promoting WACA. This is where we have to go because my job is to create a sustainable future. To do that, I have to have the proper media presence quality media presence and that will then attract sponsors which will then attract money into the sports which will then make the sport better and more professional and to wrap things up what are your main goals in the next two years what are the biggest changes we're going to see within WACA oh the biggest changes in WACA I think is more professionalism and I'm, I'm, I'm committed to create greater accountability in the national federations and the continental federations so I, I, I'm a person that uh, I believe in doing things right all the time. I, I, I make mistakes, I have made mistakes in my life and I will continue to make mistakes in my life, but I always try and what, do what's right, uh, even when people aren't looking. So for me, it's, it's, it's vital that uh, WACO and its national federations grow because we've now become uh, an Olympic sport. There is a huge opportunity within that but that opportunity will only come about by having professional national federations who are capable of doing that job. I honestly believe that kickboxing as a combat sport is without question the top combat sport in the world in relation to its diversity, its profile, the number of athletes, the number of events. However, that's not enough. We have to have the national federations functioning the way we need them to function. We have to have the coaching education, the athlete education, the national governing body education. We have to increase all of those. So for me, for the next two years, which I, that question hasn't been asked of me before, it's really about education, compliance, conformity, branding, social media. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Obviously, we know it's a very, very busy week here, so we do appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you again through the week, maybe. Thanks. Keep doing a good job.